This train ticket is all the rage in Yong Kang. It says Yong Bao An Kang for eternal peace and good health. A special breakfast that's only reserved for the early bird. Old Shinto shrines tucked away in an alley, central shops, and a thousand year ruin. What other secrets is Yong Kang hiding? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Alex. We're at Yong Kang train station. It's fairly convenient to come to Yong Kang. You can either take a train or you can take a bus. You can also get a train station ticket as a souvenir. Let's go take a look at Yong Kang. Let's go. Both the Red 10 or Green 5 of the Tainan City Bus can take you to Yong Kang. The train is another great option too. Meat pudding is a special breakfast in Yong Kang and they aren't the same as regular meatballs. Having meat pudding for breakfast has its origin in Yong Kang and a few neighboring districts. What sets meat pudding apart from meatballs? Let's go have a taste. And we're now at Han Jisu. To enjoy Yong Kang's special breakfast, simply board the Green 17 bus and hop off at the Fan Su Chuo bus stop. It's as easy as that. Meat pudding was first made and sold by Huang Sui Po, a Yong Kang resident from Fan Su Chuo in 1918. First, you take freshly ground indica rice milk and stir it into hot water to make a thick paste. Then, pour in some minced meat and fried shallots. The mixture is then molded into a circular shape with the help of a small container and allowed to cool before being fried on a hot plate. This is meat pudding. Why don't we dig in? Mmm, this is delicious. This bowl of meat pudding looks very hearty. What's inside? So the gravy is made with a big chunk of pork along with uh, milkfish and they definitely make a great breakfast. Make sure to get up early if you want to enjoy some meat pudding. If you wake up late, you might miss the opportunity to try this delicious Yong Kong specialty. Hey, David here and I'm in Xisi, a community in the district of Yong Kong. Rumor has it that there's a 100 year old noodle factory in this area, so let's go check it out. This is the owner, Mr. Liu, of a very historic noodle factory. Wow, this place looks very interesting. Can we uh, go take a look around? Yeah. The first generation noodle factory was founded when the owner's great grandfather married a girl from Fuzhou and brought the Fuzhonese way of making noodles to Tainan. The early days of noodle making was no easy stroll apart. The current owner is the fourth generation heir of the business, and a very innovative one at that. He mechanized the operation and made the entire process that much more convenient. He also experiments with biotechnology to prolong the shelf life of the noodles without adding preservatives. There are many different noodle making machines here as well, and each has a separate function. The owner calls one of them High Speed Rail 1 and the other High Speed Rail 2. Look at all these noodles! Uh, Dry noodles are the same as the more familiar Guan Miao noodles. There are also Yangchun noodles, rice ribbon noodles, assorted egg noodles, as well as knife cut rice noodles, knife cut noodles, and longevity noodles, just to name a few. This very long machine, it's actually a really specialized contraption for making vermicelli or really, really thin noodles. And uh, what it does is that it stretches the noodles out um, over the length of this corridor, and it's about 30 meters. But it's not just 30 meters, because the noodles actually um, loops around uh, the contraption. So sometimes the uh, total length of the noodles are actually up to uh, thousands of feet. This urban chili machine is really, really cool. From one end of the machine to the other, it's able to finish making the noodles and dry them at the same time. The next step is packaging. Isn't this remarkable? What's that? Oh, a gift? Thank you. Next time you guys come to Yong Kang, definitely pick one of these up, and I know what I'm going to be having for dinner tonight. 
Hey, uh, Mister, what is this? 少年，我只生后生，啊，请你食水果饼。Congratulations. 哎、欸，我请你食一只水果饼。来。Oh, thank you. Hmm. To die for these fruit pastries. You know what? Let's go find the place where they make these. I think this is the right place. Uh, let's go and see how they make these pastries. Let's go. The fruit pastry of Xi Shi is sometimes known as water pastry. The legend has it that over 100 years ago, the villagers of Yongkang would gather in front of Huangxing Temple to pray to General Xie for the birth of male heirs. Those who are successful in giving birth to a male heir would then be obliged to share a large pastry with the public, and this tradition remains to this day. On the twentieth day of the first month of the lunar calendar is the pastry sharing festival. Because fruit pastry was historically carried on carrying poles, the pastry sharing festival is sometimes called the pastry carrying festival. The fruit pastry here are all handmade, with a filling made with sweet potato paste, maltose, fruit juice, and superfine sugar. Once the pastry is ready, the shopkeeper's wife will write on it. This really is an old fruit pastry bakery. It's my first time seeing a gas oven that you have to ignite first before using it. It's very unique. Don't leave your comfort before trying this amazing dessert first. So we are here in Da Wan in front of Guanghu Temple. In this area, there are a lot of delicious small food shops here. This is perhaps the busiest place in Da Wan, which is a neighborhood in Yongkang. Da Wan also has its famous peanut brittle. There are so many shops selling peanut brittle here. This is the Yongda Night Market, and I'm gonna take you to the shop of my childhood memory. Wow, it looks so delicious here. We have the original flavor, and we have the roll and crush flavor. I can't wait to try this. This is the original flavored peanut brittle. Mm. It's really good. It has a very intense peanut aroma, and the maltose isn't too sweet either. This is so much more than just peanut brittle. This is childhood memory. They also have peanut rolls. Basically, it's the original flavored peanut brittle that's been crushed in a machine until the maltose has been mixed evenly with the peanuts. The texture is really silky and. Elegant. This is romantic. To make delicious peanut brittle, stir together maltose, water, and sugar over heat. Then pour peanuts into a mixture and simmer for two and a half hours before setting it in a pan. Once it's cooled down, it's ready to hit the shelves. The peanut brittle of Da Wan was first founded by Mr. Zhen Da Xi and has been passed down for four generations. Most of the peanut brittle shops in Da Wan are operated by Mr. Zhen Da Xi's descendants. Zhen Feng Yuan used to sell peanut brittle with his father, Zhen Jing Fu, in front of the temple. Having inherited his father's excellent skills, he insists on doing things the traditional way to pass down his grandfather's recipe and to pass it down to his own son. This sweet flavor that is close to 100 years old will be ingrained in the hearts of Yong Kong residents as a sweet memory when in Yong Kong definitely indulge in some delicious peanut brittle and savor both its history and tradition. We're on the premise of the Taiwan Sugar Corporation, but now it has become a lush green Eden in the city. I phoned up my friend Mr. Hong to show me around because apparently there's a few hidden gems in this area, so uh, let's go find him. Hey, uh, we're with Mr. Hong. This area looks very interesting. Let's ask Mr. Hong uh, about the history of this place. During the Qing Dynasty, this place was a major thoroughfare linking Tainan to Jiayi. The Shinto Shrine was built in Showa 6 or 1931. The Sando is the path approaching a Shinto Shrine. But now only the foundation remains. Further down are six pairs of Toro or stone lanterns, commonly seen in Japanese gardens. From the pillar holes in the ground, you can tell where the Tori once stood. To the left, you can see a Chochubachi, which is a water basin. Next, we have the Haiden, or the Hall of Worship. 
is surrounding it is the tapagaki, or fence that surrounds a Shinto shrine. The fences here are of a washed granolithic finish and marked with the names of the donors. Once you climb the stairs, you can see where the Honden, or the main hall, once stood. However, the Honden has since disappeared, leaving only the base and a few bolts and holes in the ground. Looking at the Shinto shrine and the sugar factory, what you see was the center of people's faith and belief. Even though the shrine has been in ruins for so many years, it's still easy to see from the remaining foundation that, while it was not a large shrine, it was still impeccably built. The monument to Sir John Slevy was a stone stele commissioned by the Qing Dynasty Royal Court in 1771. The stele bears two words, Huang Qing as a sign of respect for the Qing Dynasty, along with a double dragon motif. The stele commemorates Magistrate Zhang Yunxun, who donated his salary to repair the levees along the Yansui River, as well as building new roads and bridges. You know, although we're in the middle of a city, um, right in this place back in 2007, scientists actually found the breeding population of the farmling green tree frog. Now, uh, what's that? Well, the uh, farmling green tree frog is actually an endemic species of tree frog found only in Taiwan. How special is that? You know, although from the outside, this place may not look like much, but in reality, there's a lot of heritage here. Um, not only is there the uh, Shinto shrine, there's also the uh, green tree frogs that's really special. So uh, if you guys are into uh, history or uh, ecology, this is a place to check out. This is the Yongkang Park. It's also an historical site. It looks like it's got an amazing view. Let's take a walk. Yongkang Park is in Yongkang District, right alongside Fugo Road and Xingbo Street. Yongkang Park also sits on the site of the 4,000-year-old Wangdao ruins. The park is also rich in biodiversity, and it's a wonderful place for an afternoon stroll. This is a really beautiful park. Anytime when you're in the mood to take a stroll in the park, you should definitely try to come here. And this shop is a hidden jewel inside the traditional market. Only the locals knows about this. So let's come and see how it tastes like. Hello, this is my friend Ann. He's the owner of the shop here. Hello, Ann. Hi. Hello, Ann. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. So, Ann, where does your beef come from? It's from the traditional market. It's from the traditional market. So what are the highlights of your beef? Uh, 我们除了说它是上化的最新鲜的温体牛之外, 好, 我们厉害的地方就是说我们部位很多种. Different cuts of beef should taste differently, right? Should they be cooked differently as well? So Anne, since your beef is so good, can you teach us how to cook the beef? Uh, 很简单, 虽然部位很多种, 但是由于它新鲜, for those of you who like it rare, make sure to blanch it quickly. If you like it more well done, simply blanch it longer. The thing is, if the beef is fresh, it's going to taste good regardless. To blanch it, simply place the beef in a hot pot ladle and lower it into the pot. Pour it around a few times and make sure you don't put too much beef in there at the same time. You need enough space to properly blanch the beef and to achieve that perfect texture. Mmm, it's very fresh and rich umami. It's very tender and it literally dissolves in your mouth. Put some beef into a bowl, and as before, don't overdo it. Next, pour some boiling hot soup directly into a bowl. Wow, the soup is very sweet, and the meat is so tender compared to the last one. If you're craving for some good beef in Tainan, definitely do not miss this shop in Yongkang. It is one of the best in Yongkang.